Welcome to our used 2015 Avenger 28 RKS. Starting right in the back bumper here. If you just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there. Inside of the back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Just take note of those two ears and the adapter here. That's all be hooking up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper there, just help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that little bit fresher. Then that cap just presses into place. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you're gonna find these stabilizer jacks here. What they're gonna do is they're just gonna run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so, and that'll just firm up the unit and get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you currently have. Straight up from there, you get your exterior shower. So you've got a key just like this little guy there. You can stick it on in and open it up. You get the standard head with the three foot hose, hot and cold water, so the dog's out getting muddy. You can spray him off where he gets inside. Once you're done, you're just tucking that hose back in there, stuffing the handle underneath the handles, and locking her back down. Side of that up top, we've got your cable and satellite inlets, just a coax cable plug into there, fire up your TV location. Below that's your city water inlet, so you just take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. And then making our way down towards the front, right kind of in the front of these slide outs here. All right, underneath, we've got your two low-point drains here. So you got a uh, hot in the front, cold in the back. So the purpose of those is just you to drain out the water lines throughout the unit. The reason you'd want to do that is if you're out, you're going to be leaving the trailer for a while, you just want to get all that water out so it doesn't go stale or stagnant. Or if you're about to winterize the unit, you just want to drain all that out before pumping the antifreeze through. Ahead from there, we get your sewer system. So on the front here, you get a black valve. So that black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled with your toilets. It's, of course, going to be our dirtiest water. So you'll be dumping that first. Once that's done, you can then come to this gray one right here. That gray handle there is gonna be controlling your bathroom sink and your shower. So typically cleaner water, we'll dump that next. And then right in the back there is gonna be your galley. So that'll be for just your kitchen sink there. You'll dump that last to help keep that hose as clean as possible. A Couple of steps forward and we get your fresh water inlet here. So you just take the same water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water and it fills up your fresh water tank. Then straight down below, you can see we got your fresh water tank drain going. So just that valve there opens up, drains out the fresh water tank. Storage compartment here just has a little finger latch on the side that holds it open. It does see straight through to the other side. Inside of here, you also find your water hose. Inside of that water hose is a park adapter. So your 30 amp short cord would plug into there, 15 amp to a standard outlet. You're on front of the unit. You got this little box here. So inside of that box is your battery. So as long as you're plugged in, that battery is charging. Also through your seven pin will also charge that battery. Two knobs there, if you loosen them off, you can push them back and then you get access to your propane tanks. For the video, I'll just pull it right off. So you can see this changeover is currently pointing to this tank. So we open up that tank and that guy right back there, I'll turn green, just letting us know we've got propane in the system. If it were to go red, it's just letting you know there's no longer any propane there. So at that point, you'd close off this tank, flip the changeover to the other tank and run off of this one while you get the other one filled. In front is the power tongue jack, so you get a light switch on the left there, turns on the little service light, and then on the right, up is down, down is up. Also this little plug back there, if you pull that out, you get access to your manual override, so if your batteries were to die, to die you can still run it up and down. Around the side of the unit, you get the other end of your storage compartment here, and so it does just see through through the other side. This little jack right there is for running all of your stabilizers, just a three quarter inch end on it, just slides on, runs them up and down. back towards the door you get this little t-latch there so that would slide into here it just holds the door open for you when you're out camping right by the door you're gonna find your exterior speaker you have another one straight forward v-channel mount there so that would be for a tv you just slide into there mount your tv outside power outlet for it as well as your cable and satellite outlet for it exhaust for your furnace here so if you're ever running a furnace you just want to make sure that's not blocked off it does get hot then in the back, you get your hot water tanks. That keyway there, you're going to line it up and you can pop it on open. All your controls for turning this guy on are just inside of the unit. Before we ever turn it on, though, we just want to hit that relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. A bit of water coming out of there is just letting you know the tank is full. It's safe to fire it up, and we're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Close it back down and lock it with the keyway. In the back of the unit, you get your spare tire back here. Right behind that is your power inlet. So as you pop that port on open, you get your shore cord that you can pull on out of there. Standard 30 amp end on it. Most campsites are going to have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. And like we showed you earlier, we do provide you with that adapter to go down to a 15 amp to a standard outlet. Well, that's just a service port for your fridge. Nothing back there for you to worry about. And then up from there, we get the vent for your stove. So of course, the propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you use it. So we have a fan inside to evacuate those fumes. This flap out here just allows those to get outside. So you get a little ear on the one side there, just locks it down. 
allows it to open up. Once you're done, you just want to slide those ears back in and just prevent any sort of dust from kicking up in there while you're out traveling. So now we'll make our way inside of the unit here. Here's this handle just up 90 degrees and it falls into place. Then we can open up the door. Like I said, you get that T-latch to hold it open. We're not going to be using that today though. So you grab that handle here, pull it straight out. Flip that last step over. Then we can step on inside. So first things first, right on the left, we got your fire extinguisher there. So that's standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Straight up the wall from there, we got your light switches. The one on the left there does your one interior light. The one on the right will do your awning light outside. Your awning itself is on this switch here. So we press and hold out and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're gonna see a little white flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna to wanna to stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case our fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap there. It's just a little sticky today, so it's not quite coming down. So we'll just extend it a bit further and then bring it back in and that should then drop it. There we go. Right. So if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna hold some water anyway. So what you can do is grab either arm front or rear and you're just gonna pull straight down on it. Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. And if you like that angle better, cause it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending up. A little press and hold in, that awning will make its way back in. Again, we're just watching to make sure that our fabric is over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just there and not running the risk of bending your arm. slide out switch beside that press and hold out your slide will make its way out once that slides fully extended we're gonna get some clicks from the motors letting us know they've reached their stall once you hear those you'll let go So we showed you that one light was off the switch. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just on their own center switches. Into the kind of sitting area here. So you have your two recliners there. Your pull tabs, I believe they just kick back and they kick out the front legs. And then up top, you get the one little light there. Up in this compartment here, you're gonna find that blue pouch. That blue pouch has all of your owner's manuals in it. Any keys, anything like that for the unit, you'll find right in there. Just more storage off to the side. As signified by that red tab, that is an emergency exit. So you'll pull this tab in towards you, slide that window wide open, bring the screen on with it and hop on out. A little bit of storage up in here. That grill down below it is just the return air for your furnace. So you just wanna make sure it's not blocked off. Little white box there is the ULP detector. So propane's heavier than air. It'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like a smoke detector would. Bit of a pantry spot here, but more storage. And then on the other side, of the Kind of island there, you get your drawer space. Up above the sink, you get a little light there, a bit more storage up top. And right above my head, you get a roof vent, so just turn that to open it up. Simple as that. Hot and cold water sink, of course, you do have the mobile head as well. A bit more storage down below. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself, once it comes time, there's two screws in the bottom of this panel here, you get access to that hot water tank. And then in the corner, you get another little light, a bit more storage. Microwave beside that, pretty standard, just like home. Well, that's your range vent, so you get a light on the side and fan on the right. So that's that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up so that we're evacuating any fumes from the stove. For the stove, you're gonna press it in, turn it on the light, and she fires right up. I will just mention the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the unit for a while, it will take a minute to fire up just because it'll have to clear all the air out of the propane lines. That's perfectly normal. For the oven, we're going to open that up, press that knob in, turn it over to pilot and grab a lighter, press and hold. And then right in the back, 
You see that pallet leg gets going. Once you get it going, you just hold the knob in for another few seconds and you can release the knob and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once we're done, we're just going to turn that back down to pilot and it'll hold just the pilot light for us. But if we're traveling or leaving the unit for a while, we just want to make sure it's right off. Down below that's a bit of storage. And then we get your fridge here. It's the power button on the left there with it close to flush, that's it turned on. With it over flush, that's it turned off. The button on the right near flush is first going to use auto. So auto power is going to first look for AC. If AC is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out boondocking and you want it running solely on gas, you're going to have that button come out over flush and that'll run it on just gas. Freezer up top and fridge down below. Temp selection right in the back there and as the sticker says, up is colder, down is warmer. And if you were to ever get that check light there, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up on gas. So at that point, just off and back on to reset it. A bit more storage down below it, and below that we've got your converter. Press the top and center, she pops on open. You get all of your breakers down the middle there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's going to sit in the center, so just turn it off and then back on. So off and then on. And then on the right side, we got all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. A bit more storage space, top and bottom. And in the dinettes here, so you get your little light there, push button side. More red handles back there, so that's another emergency exit. You pull those handles up so that they're pointing vertical straight up, and then you can slide the window open. For the dinettes here, if you just kind of wiggle that table up, you can get it out of the legs. The legs will do the same thing. They'll wiggle out of their bases, and then you can lay them down. Then you have a little ledge across the three sides there. You'll lay the, ta you'll lay the table down onto those. Take your back cushion as well as the side cushions to fill in the middle and create a bed. Right up above the dinette is your smoke detector. At the other end of the side, you get the another switch, switched light there, storage up top. And then this couch here does fold out. So I'm taking the back cushions, throwing them out of the way, grabbing the sandal here up and out, and then you just fold this last bit over. Once you're done, you're folding that foot up onto itself, and then up and in. And then just the back cushions back, or sorry, the bottom cushions just back into place. And then in your entertainment area, you get some storage on the side, as well as down below it. And then right down at the bottom, you get some more. Inside of here is where you're going to find your antenna outlet. For turning that antenna on, you get the button beside it. You get that green light there. Let's just let it, you know it is turned on. 12 volt outlet for a TV there, or 120 volt outlets. AV cables are hooked into the stereo already. The stereo itself, straightforward. Power button there turns it on. You get your seats on the side, volume on the other pretty straightforward up above that we've got a tv mounting location so you can see you get the same sort of v-channel you just slide the tv into there remote over here for your stereo and then into the hallway so in here we don't get a light you get the roof end so you just open that up same as the one in the back then we've got your thermostat here so that slider center right that's it turned off with it over to far right that's it turned on when onto heat when you're running your heat you're going to want that auto fan on high and then just select your temperature, of course. The furnace will be moving its air through a bunch of floor registers that you have throughout the units. Center left, you get fan, so that'll turn on the air conditioning fan. It's at that point you can select your high or low fan based on what you want. Otherwise, you're typically just going to leave that on auto. So with the fan going, it's just moving air. There's no cooling involved. Slider full left and then select your temperature. That'll turn on the air conditioner. With your air conditioner going, you basically have two different options. You got three louvers here. If you have them all closed, you'll be using all of the ceiling ducting to move your air. Or you can open them up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want those open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close them off and start moving the air throughout. Once you're done, just have it sit center right and that'll turn everything off. Into the bathroom here. The light switch is just over on the right, it turns on just the one light, the other light over here is just on its own switch. Roof vent here is the same thing, just the knob opens it up and then in the corner you get a switch to turn on the fan. Your toilet just opens on up and you get your flusher front and center. And then kind of some storage space here. The shower just has a travel latch on the left, you slide that over and you can open it on up. You get your standard head and hose, hot and cold water. 
medicine cabinet there. Below that's your sink, hot and cold water again, of course. Little stopper there. Below that's a bit more storage. Just be mindful of our drains and our water lines. We don't want to be breaking any of that. GFI protected outlets beside it. So test on the bottom, reset up top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Monitor panel up above it. So in the bottom corner, you get your water pump switch. Turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor system up top, so you get battery in the very bottom there, so you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, you'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black, your gray, and your galley. Like I said outside, your galley is going to be your kitchen sink, your gray is going to be your bathroom sink and shower, and black is your toilet. Up top, we get your hot water tank controls, so the flame on the right there fires it up with the propane. So, you should hear that pop of the flame right away. There you go. If you were to get that red light there, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, just off and back on to reset it. And then on the left side there, they'll be firing it up with electricity. And then in the bedroom here, it's the light again, just in its own center switch there. You get your antenna control here as well. So you just turn on that knob to bring it up. Once it's up all the way, it'll just kind of stop in place. Just like that. And then you can pull down on that and you can turn it around looking for your best signal. Wherever you find it, you can leave it there. Before you go traveling though, you just want to make sure those two arrows are lined up and bring it back down all the way. Just ensures that the channel that the antenna sits inside is lined up properly. Right. Up on the wall there, you got your carbon monoxide alarm. So that'll go again right away here. All right, and below that we get your emergency exit. You're pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen, taking this handle here, throwing, throwing it outside and hopping on out. And then under your bed, if you just pick up the foot of that, you get a lack of access to a little storage compartment. Previous owner did install that kind of sheet of plywood there, otherwise it does access completely to that front storage. Above each head in the bed, you do get the little reading light there, some closet space on either side, they're identical to both sides. Simple as that, and then back on the wall over here, you do have a TV backer, cable and satellite outlet for it, as well as a power outlet for it. And really, this just leads you back into the hallway kicks you back into the back bed and the kitchen there and that's about it for this unit so if you've got any other questions on it please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272